Timmy's favorite show was Horrible Monsters on Channel 12. The show featured four Henson-style Mupp puppets, colored red, yellow, blue, and green. They had no names, and they were simply called number one through number four. All shared a very basic design, perfectly round heads with large, flapping, toothless mouths, and white eyes with no pupils, plump bodies, tubular limbs, and no noses. Then this set was set of a cardboard backdrops, what looked like a park. The episode's plots were very basic. All the show ever seemed to be a ripoff of Teletubbies. The monsters were loud and obnoxious, always bickering with each other, and the faceless, fatherly narrator, with a British accent, had to tell them to be quiet and behave themselves. The narrator began with each episode in the same introduction. In the land, near far away, the horrible monsters come out to play. Fun and laughter is guaranteed, but only if they ask for a favor, pay them no heed, for they are horrible monsters indeed. Timmy was sure never what that last line meant, but he hardly cared. He was only six years old. Timmy was watching the episode that involved monsters fighting over a ball. The dialogue was an overlapping back and forth of, It's my ball. No, it's mine. Give it back. Etc. The narrator started chiding them off screen. Now, now, there is no need to get rough. You can share the ball. Number four, please let go of the ball and apologize to number one. Number four, the green one, sighed and reluctantly did this, then said, I'm sorry, Mr. Narrator. It's just we've been so restless and cooped up in this tiny set. Number four, I told you not to talk about that on the show. Number four turned to face this scream. Hey, maybe you can help us. Number four, I'm warning you. If someone like you could just let us out, we could be free. Number four, that's enough. Stop it right now. Timmy was startled. The narrator was no longer giving his usual friendly chiding. He was practically screaming. Timmy felt the pain of secondhand shame when he felt when he saw another kid being berated by a parent. Number four sighed again, and the monsters resumed talking about the ball. The narrator cleared his throat and said, Sorry about that, children. Sometimes you just have to be hard on the monsters. They can get very unruly sometimes, and you mustn't listen to any notions they have about letting out. Maybe they may be friendly, but they are still horrible monsters at heart. If we let them out, something terrible could happen. The show resumed as normal, which is to say the monsters continued to argue over pity causes, then to learn to get along throughout the episode. For the next week, Timmy continued to watch the show, and nothing out of the ordinary happened. That is until one episode, when number four, the green monster, was missing. The show began as it always did with the monsters fighting over something, or rather, but number four was absent and it was rather an attempt to distract or resolve whatever the current conflict was. The narrator interjected with, Gentlemen, gentlemen, where is number four? The monsters said they hadn't seen him. Then they began arguing when they had him seen him last. Never mind all that, the narrator yelled. Everyone form a search party and find him. The three monsters started looking all over the set, the cameraman followed them, circling around, around different backdrops, passing cardboard cutouts of trees and benches. No regard was given for the cinematography. The tracking notion was revealed to the back, park backdrops to be adjacent to the urban skyline setting of a different scale, for example. After a minute or two, number four entered the view from off screen. The narrator and the monsters asked where he was, to which he was answered he was backstage. The narrator admonished the green puppet was going to be in a restricted area, but before going on to introduce the monsters to a new game of some kind, he also explained the rules. The lights on or on the set suddenly went out. What happened? The narrator asked. Is that smoke? I smell. Number four, what did you do? It may have been his imagination. But Timmy thought he could faintly smell the smoke as well. On the TV, he heard the sound of fans blowing as well, as what sounded like rain. A moment later, a technical difficulties card displayed, but it was a standard notice. No comedic one with a high classic pitch tone, 
that was shown for laughs when the monsters were really getting out of control. Later, Timmy was lying in his bed when he could hear voices coming from his TV in his room. The voices were arguing with each other. No, this is how you turn it on, you idiot. Ah, that's better. It was the green monster from the show, number four. Only show now that he was missing an eye. He had his face pressed against the screen, illuminated by what seemed to be a flashlight. Timmy, you have to let us out. Your TV is the only way we've been able to break through in years. Timmy sat up still half asleep and stared at the screen. Timmy, it's us, see? Number four stepped back a little, so his face no longer filled the whole screen. Timmy continued to still stare in silent bewilderment. Fellas, I don't think he could see you. Turn your flashlight on, will ya? The other three monsters did so, and Timmy only saw them glow yellow, and a bit of dark set behind them. Some of the yellow light all spilled out of the screen and mingled with the moonlight on Timmy's bedroom carpet. Wow, what do you want me to do? Smash your TV screen with your baseball bat. Your parents aren't home yet, so they never hear. You tell them they were playing baseball in your room, and you accidentally broke the TV. I don't know about that. What if they don't believe me? They will believe you. Just do it and let us out. Please let us out. Yes, let us out. Let us out. The yellow one joined in. As soon as they were all chatting, let us out. Let us out. Timmy couldn't take it anymore. He retrieved his aluminum bat from the closet and walked over to the TV. All right, fellas, I'm going to do it. Stand back, he said. The four monsters took a couple paces backwards, and their flashlights illuminated on the backstage drop. Timmy had been more lucid. He would have noticed that a part of the set looked charred, and the light from the flashlights illuminated droplets and puddles of water. Timmy closed his eyes and swung the bat. The screen was smashed with a hole in it, and the monsters could no longer be seen. Do it again, he heard number four say. We need the whole screen gone. Timmy swung the bat two more times. When the most of the glass was gone, the four puppets leapt out of the blackness and into his bedroom floor. They were all smaller than they looked on television, about the size of a teddy bear. The red, yellow, and blue monsters were scattered. Numbers one and two fled to the closet, while three disappeared under the bed, and number four turned to look up at Timmy. Thanks for your help, Timmy. Those dumb studio and network executives wanted to keep us trapped in there forever. See you around, kid. He then ducked behind the bookcase and out of sight. Timmy turned on the lights and searched his room, and he looked under the bed and in the closet, behind the bookshelf and everywhere else. But there was no sign of the monsters. The next day, any thoughts he had was all a dream, were quickly refuted from the broken television. He gave his parents an excuse number four suggested, and they took away his bag and grounded him for a week which meant no TV. They also said to him that they would not be replacing his bedroom TV, and he would have to watch TV in the living room from now on, once his grounding was up. After this experience, Timmy wasn't especially interested in watching a lot of TV anymore anyway. But when the week was over and his parents told him he was no longer grounded, he flipped to Channel 12 at the time. He always watched Horrible Monsters, only to find another show playing. Oh, I'm sorry, Timmy. I forgot to tell you. His mother said, the network canceled that show. What's up, my pretties? It's the Lion Queen here. I want to appreciate you all for tuning into this video. And I do appreciate you guys supporting my video by giving this video likes and stuff. If you really enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe if you're new, ring the bell for notifications to when I upload so that way you guys will get updated for whenever I upload. If you want to follow me on Twitter or DeviantArt, feel free to leave, to leave a follow on those if you are interested in following me on those socials. If you want to support my backup channel, known as Ms. Dark Shigo, feel free to subscribe to it, as a link to that will also be in the About page section. And with that being said, and that being the case, thank you so much for watching, my pretties, and as always, please, stay pretty!